Since the early days of human history, men have been the protectors of their families and their communities. I imagine cavemen, I'd like to imagine myself as a caveman, I imagine cavemen fending off giant bears and saber-toothed tigers, also harnessing fire, building shelter, hunting food, all in the name of health and safety for their tribe. Today the world is a more complex place and men are searching for their role. But I don't feel that the role has shifted that much from those early days. I believe men still have this natural inclination to protect, but what we need protection from today is different. We don't need protection from bears and tigers. Actually, in Bozeman, some people do need protection <laughs> from bears. But what we actually need protection from is ourselves. It's men. The protectors have become the predators. Men are the perpetrators of an immense amount of violence that's become part of our status quo. Sexual assault, sexual abuse, rape, mass shootings, and a sky-high suicide rate. We see this around us all the time. And the stats are scary. In the next 10 minutes as I speak, it's likely that five Americans will be sexually assaulted. Every year, 45,000 Americans take their own lives. 90% of those people are male. Mass shootings are now normal. And the faces of these crimes are overwhelmingly male. It's time for us to recognize that men are hurting and because men are hurting, they're hurting themselves and they're hurting other people. But this violence doesn't just live in the news. Last year, the Me Too movement showed many of us how close to home this really is. I'm the host of a podcast called The Everyman Podcast, and one of the most impactful and popular episodes to date is with my beautiful and elegant wife, Elise. And as women around the country shared their stories, we put our son down for a nap, and we went into our podcast studio, which is really just a weird little closet off our extra bedroom. <laughs> and she stepped up to the mic, and she shared about a stack of assaults she's been the victim of, including a night in her early 20s where she was drugged and gang-raped by a group of young men. And she shared about this, the hurt of it. She also shared about how that hurt has carried into our marriage and into our relationship and how it's not just hers anymore, it's mine too. Sharing that was really scary. It was scary to be so publicly intimate, but it was even more scary, honestly, just to sit there with her because I couldn't fix anything. I couldn't change the past. I didn't know what to do. All I could do was simply try to be with her in her hurt. And as we sat there in that weird closet with all of that hurt, we started to think about the future and we asked the question, what are we gonna do for our children? How are we going to protect them? My answer to that question is that we have to go to the source of the violence. And I've had the great fortune to spend at least 15,000 hours of my life working directly with men and boys in close, intimate contact in transformational settings. I can't look at my brother or my dad, I'm gonna start crying, so. <laughs> so working with these men has, has shown me that there are two things that are contributing to the hurt of men. One is their repression of their feelings and their desires, and the other is a lack of deep, meaningful human connection. Disconnected from themselves and disconnected from other people, men and boys, are just stuck with destructive amounts of repressed feelings and desires, and they have no one to share them with. The enemy is not outside. The enemy is within. The world is asking men to reckon with this and to do what it takes to create health and safety in our society by starting with ourselves. I believe what the world needs from men today, oh man, I really lost my place, sorry. I'm feeling so much right now. Yeah, thank you. I believe that what the world needs from men today are for us to focus on two big changes. And the first is to learn and accept and to practice to be vulnerable. And then with that vulnerability, the world's asking us to create meaningful human connections around us so that we never have to be alone and that we can create this web of men that are there for each other and there for everybody else. What I'm actually most excited about sharing today 
is the how. How? How do we become vulnerable? How do we become connected? And the, the awesome thing is that they're just simple human skills that we all have access to. It's just that they're muscles that we've let atrophy. But like running a marathon, training for a marathon, or learning to play the guitar, all we need is a little bit of direction and then a bunch of practice. I have a human relationship equation that I like to use. And it goes like this. Vulnerability multiplied by time equals depth of connection. We become closer when we open up to one another. And the more often we do it, the deeper we go. All men need is permission, direction, and a place to practice, okay? Today we need a new type of gym. We spend plenty of time working out our bodies and, and our minds. We need a new type of gym where we can exercise our insides. We all have a lot of emotional reps that we need to do. These new gyms, I'm gonna introduce a concept called a men's group. And a men's group is a small group of men who commit to getting together regularly to work on their emotional intelligence and their relational and interpersonal skills. I've been sitting with my group here in Montana, in downtown Bozeman for the past two and a half years, and I would do anything for these men. I want you to imagine eight of us sitting in a room, and the first man to share is a farmer from Livingston who just went on vacation, and he proposed to his girlfriend. And he never knew that this was gonna, like he, he always doubted if he was gonna get married, but he did, and as he sat there and shared with us, he is so in love and his joy is just like radiating through him. And we get to celebrate that with him. The next man to share is an artist, a metal worker, who'd been working for other people his entire life and didn't want to anymore. With the support of the group, he found this self-confidence, this nugget of self-confidence inside him to start his own company, and it's working. He's not sleeping enough, he's working way too hard, but he's succeeding, and it's beautiful. And then the next man to share is a returned Special Forces veteran who left the service and was hurting for a year, lost and alone and not sure what to do, where to go. He literally stumbled into our group. And where, when he did, he found the camaraderie and the accountability, the support and the love that he needed to get his life on track. Every week we open up to one another and as we learn about each other, we learn about ourselves we're there when our children are born, when, we're, when, when people in our family are sick, when we lose loved ones, and we're the men that will be there to carry each other's caskets when we die. When men practice this together, oh, sorry, back up. <laughs> we will be the ones that carry each other's caskets when we die. I recommend to any man out there to find, join, or start a group. And it doesn't take, it doesn't take any special set of skills. All it takes is the willingness to show up and be yourself. And my company that I helped found called Everyman, we are there to help support and spread this practice. And the practice is really simple, and that's what, I, that's what I'm gonna share now. So the practice that we do in this group is something you can also do anywhere in your life at any time. You can do it with a buddy at the bar, you can do it with your romantic partner, you can do it with anyone. So it has three simple steps. It's slow down, feel your experience and what is true for you, and share it with someone else. So we're gonna practice together. So please close your eyes. First, we're gonna slow down. I want you to imagine that you're a 747 blasting through the sky and you're coming down to land and you, your, your wheels touch the tarmac and you slowly roll to a stop. And in this moment, you don't have to do anything or be anywhere other than right where you are. I'm gonna practice step two, which is feel. So I'd like you to feel your physical body from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. Just notice what is there. Any sensations you have, good, bad, comfortable, or uncomfortable, just feel. And then I want you, we're gonna dive into the emotional part of you. See if you can identify one single emotion that is most present for you. Is it happy, sad, hopeful, scared, ashamed, anything. 
And as you feel your emotions and your body, see how they work together. And you can notice these things in your life that when you have something you want to say, but you don't know how, you feel a lump in your throat. Or when you feel anxious, I know I feel tension in my solar plexus. Okay, you can open your eyes. And we don't have time for everyone to share with each other. But I want you to know that when you share this simple, simple truth for you of what you feel with someone else, it is an act of vulnerability, pure vulnerability, that opens a door to a deep, meaningful human connection, the kind of connection that we all need, the kind of connection that when we have it, we feel safe, we feel seen, we feel part of something larger. I believe it's what our DNA wrote for us to have. I have been obsessed with this topic for a long time. And I care about men and boys because I spent a lot of time with them. But two years ago, it became very, very acute and important when my son Duke was born. 30 seconds after he was born, he was on his mom's chest. And I got down right next to him and I said, Hey, Duke, I'm your dad. I've been waiting so long to meet you. And I didn't know that infants had the strength to do this, but he, he craned his head up. And we met eyes for the first time and I was shattered into a billion pieces. And that love that I felt is the fuel that I'm running on right now in this moment. I feel him here with me. And I knew in that moment that to be the dad that I want to be and need to be was more than just being there for him. It's more than just being there for him and his mom. It meant that I had to take my part of responsibility for the culture that he's growing up into. I want a safer world for my son. I am here to ask for your help because the whole point of this is that we have to do it together. It's time to really be honest about the amount of hurt in our society, in our family, and about the amount of hurt we have in ourselves. And in order to do that, we need to carve out the time to learn to be vulnerable and connected. And for men, this is a very necessary and needed step. And I can't wait to do it together. Thank you.